sir uh, mr uh, chand rakesh roshan sir uh, is a uh, uh, assistant professor uh, uh, as well as uh, the head of the department physics uh, then uh, faculty in charge and training and placements in uh, university coordinator for the iit triple uh, it buzzer campus so so sir has a uh, working experience near around uh, 12 years uh, for the academic experience uh, for the uh, uh, research domains and then uh, post graduation and then under graduation uh, near around uh, um, for for the uh, first principle correlation nuclear st structure studies for research domain the in academic achievements uh, sir has a uh, uh, mtech uh, in a uh, mtech in the university of hyderabad uh, qualified in a jest in uh, all india first time qualified in a gate in uh, all india uh, rank uh, the qualified in csar uh, ugc net in uh, net for ls Uh, awarded a nasa teacher award in 2013 uh, sir as a uh, united talks as a resource person for a uh, uh, n number of uh, n number of programs for a invited invited uh, persons to talk a national conference on physics and chemistry of fundamental law material in 2019 as a resourceful resourceful person and speaker at uh, uh, faculty develop program on FD, effective mentoring under a equity action plan as a invited presentation and a panel discussion on IEEE international conference at IIT Madras uh, as well as the number of uh, invited speakers and uh, resourceful person for the sir yeah, sir as a professional achievement and then uh, responsibility for uh, uh, for years uh, awarded for uh, uh, such a best, best faculty award uh, and as uh, awarded for the bharat excellence award in 2018 in the field of uh, education Uh, sir has awarded the young leader in science award uh, on uh, 6 june january 2018 he is a member of uh, university digital initiative committee uh, as well as a member of board of studies and the convener of uh, uh, recruitment boards and panels of recruitment of guest faculty in the department of physics and chemistry max telugu telugu and then english he is a faculty in charge of the placements and then uh, is a expert member at the resourceful person in act orientation program Mm. as well as the committee members of uh, quarter allocation and the member of uh, sign boards uh, as well as the member of uh, conveners for rules uh, as a committee member of uh, conduction of university tech fest as a core committee member for the university of conventional program as a uh, in charge for a uh, yeah, number of uh, uh, academic uh, departments uh, for the expert member for the Uh, conveners for the gas lab uh, assist, uh, assistant uh, recruitment in department of physics as well as uh, awarded for the uh, nasa uh, teacher award in 2013 and the nasa appreciation in 2014 15 16 and then 2017 uh, for guiding the students to meritorious position in nasa aem es sp settlements He is a coordinator for softskill uh, uh, is a organizing committee member of uh, university tech as well as uh, head of the department of physics uh, for uh, rg ukt buzzer uh, from that uh, july 2014 onwards uh, is a organizing committee member of uh, national science day celebration uh, sir has a appreciation award for uh, np tel uh, iid madras for a successful collaboration and the execution of uh, scop uh, buzzer uh, uh, and as, as well as uh, sir has a wonderful uh, a resource person for the icd tool education because uh, um, sir is a key, a keynote person speaker for resourceful person for uh, for seven programs like as a keynote speaker for unleashing power of online assessments and then keynote speaker for a national level act workshop digital transformation and pedagogies and the sole resourceful person for the five days national fdp tools for online teaching learners and then evaluation uh, as well as uh, resource person for ict tools in education for teaching and then uh, another an uh, resourceful person for the new normal in teaching and then uh, faculty for the uh, new normal in teaching for the faculty as a part of a free microsoft education training program uh, to educate the teachers in ict tools uh, for near around uh, participated 500 participants so uh, sir is a uh, is a certified for a certified person for the uh, microsoft innovative uh, trainer uh, the next level of uh, master trainer the next level for uh, expert in 2021 to 22 sir is a adobe creative educator uh, uh, certified person for adobe creative educator kau gold certified uh, teacher of awesome as well as uh, tcs ion certified uh, digital teacher 
uh, trained for uh, sorry uh, trained for uh, 1500 plus teaching faculties spread across uh, 1200 institution across the country uh, in, in his personal capability completely uh, free of cost uh, sar is having a own youtube channel uh, 20 plus uh, free of icd tools program uh, having uh, have uh, have been discussed in uh, youtube uh, these are highly beneficial to all teaching faculty uh, even uh, help to have our uh, ict tools in education uh, sar is uh, conducting uh, the short term training courses uh, fdps for uh, near around 18 fdps uh, sar uh, sar is uh, uh, presenting conferences uh, symposium and then uh, workshop uh, in, uh, near around 12 programs yeah, sar is the review person for the elsevier uh, materials today proceedings uh, and then uh, sar is presenting conference near around eight paper presentation and then publication uh, uh, 10 publication sar is a good resourceful person for the like this fdp, FDP. Uh, sar is the such a <laughs> uh, so, like as a, such a, a compact person for this uh, FDP for uh, related to the ICT tools, uh, we on behalf of participants and then uh, uh, behalf of department and Murova Polytechnic, uh, we welcome to for the, this separate FDP, sir. Uh, uh, very good morning uh, as well as uh, happy New Year, sir. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Kamar, for this detailed introduction. <laughs> So yes, first sir. of all, uh, I thank the uh, uh, organizers. Uh, uh, ACT is the sponsored uh, six days induction refresher program uh, on the pedagogical techniques and tools for technical education in the new normal. Uh, organizers, uh, Murugappa Polytechnic College, uh, Department of Mechanical Engineering. <clears throat> so happy new year and a warm good morning to everyone. So this is uh, Ishan Rakesh Roshan here. Uh, I hope you are able to see my screen. Uh, can someone please confirm? Yes, yes, we are yes, able yes, to see. Yes, All yes, right. yes, uh, thank yes, you. Yes. Are you able to see it in uh, full screen? Yeah, more? Uh, yeah. All right, great. Okay, so <clears throat> in the next few minutes, maybe one and a half hour or two hours, I'll try to you know <clears throat> talk a bit on the ICT tools. So I'll be focusing on uh, the low cost setup, you know, ICT complete setup for the educators in the new normal. So I'll give you an over overview of all the tools uh, and a few of them I'll discuss in uh, detail. So let's get started. Uh, I'll give maybe 10, 15 minutes a brief introduction of the backdrop of the ICT tools and other things because we need to know the terminologies. After that, we'll get into the uh, exact uh, stuff. So teaching mechanisms or learning mechanisms you know from our pers teachers perspective it's a teaching mechanism and the students perspective it's a learning mechanism so basically you know they are categorized into traditional learning uh, blended slash hybrid learning and online learning mechanism the traditional learning is what we are all we all are we all have got used to that is you know we all go to a school or college sit in a classroom right and the teacher comes there's a blackboard and then teachers write writes over there and then he explains so all the students are under one roof they all come to one place and then typically chalk and talk method is what we say right we write explain and most importantly this entire traditional learning mechanism is a teacher driven mechanism so the the entire adaptation of understanding of the concepts and everything is dependent upon the execution of the teacher hybrid learning on the contrary you know it's it's a blended learning it's it's a mix of teacher as well as you know some part of online so you know so we need to blend both of these so at on one one side you have the teacher over here and the students in the class and apart from that we also make use of uh, the additional tools like uh, icts you know computer and all of that so we need to blend both of these you know so so what are the considerations for a blended learning now the most important considerations are number one you now you need to one needs to use multiple technologies and media to deliver the content and one needs to provide social and emotional support this is also very important as teachers you know we have a greater responsibility all of us and we should also make sure that students are engaged you know please remember you know uh, teaching is not a one way mechanism teaching will only be interesting teaching will only be purposeful when the students are also engaged so they should also start asking questions 
could be related to subject or could be related to life skills or anything else so engaging students is very very important so and the questioning activities questioning activities are a must it's not that students are uh, what do you say they are uh, uh, they just remain silent they should start questioning right and uh, we should also try to incorporate the activities that will require the students to reflect on their learning so what does this mean give them some activities like assignments or tests you know where based on what they have learned right they can start reflecting and then try to resolve or solve the assignment or problems that you have given them and uh, you should also make sure that the students engage in a collaborative learning so what's meant by collaborative learning i mean so teacher student 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 we all should call, collaborate right we all should get together you know either online mode or physical mode and then try to resolve uh, the you know problems or whatever i mean if it is from a subject point of view and uh, we need to the entire process needs to be synthesized evaluated uh, you know and assessment good assessment also should happen so what are the parts of blended learning so there are basically three components you know one is you know in person classroom teaching will be there as a part of blended learning and apart from it there will also be online learning material so you know very they should students should be having a structured independent study time so very very we say structured there is a particular you know time frame available for this and uh, a blended learning basically should be a fusion of online and face to face you know between the uh, teacher and the students now apart from the blended learning there is one more mechanism of teaching you know generally this is used in uh, the foreign countries us you know this is famous there which is called as flipped learning now what is flipped learning i mean flipping flipping means you know swapping kind of you know so to keep it very simple so what what happens in a flipped learning is student will uh, teacher will share the content or material to the students today the uh, the notes or material ready material the, the candidates will go through it the students would go through it and next class when they come tomorrow when they come they'll start asking question they'll start discussing about that the teachers basically will assign the students lecture materials and presentations to be viewed at home or outside the classroom so they will go through it and then they'll come back right and then the discussion will happen it's not a teaching thing that happens the next day so instead of sit and learn what we generally do in the traditional mechanism what happens here is do and learn so you know students will know what is the concept if they have any questions or queries regarding the concept they'll get it clarified so basically in this case the classroom time would be more enjoyable productive and engaging for the students as well as the teachers so what's the advantage of uh, the, the flipped learning so here class time you know classroom time you know where you physically meet the students one hour or 45 minutes or whatever it can be used in in for better things like it can be used to foster a deeper understanding or for enrichment activities so you can involve them in you know lot of activities and uh, in this mode the educator or the teacher you know he guides the students as they try to apply the concepts and they and engage and engage them creatively in the subject matter rather than just reading the material and then uh, uh, reading the textbook and then uh, just going through it so it's like they are engaged in the concepts and then they have they have any queries they can get it resolved so here the role of a teacher is more more like a coach or a mentor so mentoring is very very important here and uh, one should not get the concept wrong the 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 aim of a flipped learning is not to replace the teacher with awesome videos or very nice looking videos no that's not the case and the aim is not at all just to simply create a online course not at all true and it's not just to leave the students to their own devices i mean give them i mean they have mobiles or laptops or tabs give them some material they'll study on their own no this is not the case okay this is not the purpose of a flipped classroom and the third the last mechanism that we are all facing now rather you know during the pandemic because of the pandemic is the online learning mechanism where where it's, it's a completely you know we are on a completely online mode as you all, as you all know so what are the terminologies that that we need to know when we talk about ict tools or uh, as a teacher when you are talking about the new normal in education what are the tools that you know what are the terminologies that we need to know blended learning 
LMS, uh, educational resources, video conferencing, assessment, exit slip, whiteboards, polls, etc. There are so many of them. I just have put a few of them. We will try to discuss all of these, you know, in, in little greater detail as we go along in the next few minutes. So when we say I, I require a comprehensive ICT setup, what all do you require? First thing is you need to talk to students. So you should have a video conferencing mechanism. So it can be a live mechanism or it can be a recording mechanism. So you have to discuss with them, you know, live in live. That should be possible. Or you make a video, make a recording and then upload the video somewhere. Both possibilities should be there. So what are the options that are available? And most important thing is presentation. You know, your presentation should be very appealing. So it should be catchy. I mean, the student should be able to like, oh my goodness, this is looking very good. So this is nice. So he should get that feeling. So presentation, PPT or whatever should be very appealing to the students. And you should also be able to share your uh, content, you know, notes or materials or syllabus or any handouts with them. So there should be some place, you know, where you should be able to do all of it. A learner management system, we call it as LMS, learner management system. And uh, it's not just you, you, you teach a lesson online and then that's all. You need to know whether the students are following it or not. So you should also try to analyze the understanding of the students. So we, we call, we can call it as, you know, we can, you should have polls. Once again, when I say poll, uh, you know, it, it, it should be anonymous. I mean, if you, if the student has to write his name and then give his feedback, obviously they will not feel comfortable, right? So you cannot write his name and then say it is very bad. That, that generally doesn't happen, right? So the poll should also be anonymous. It is for your understanding whether the students are following or not. And then at the end of it, you should also have assessment, right? So grading should be there. There should be some due date for them to submit the assessment test assignment whatever you want to call it and once again this quiz or assessment that you give it should be interesting the first thing is it should be interesting and it should be interactive so how do you do that so what are the tools that i have to make this assessment interesting and interactive instead of simply giving them a google form and then say okay uh, you know uh, fill it up i mean write the answers you have half an hour time and they submit the answers they get the results instead of it they say, okay, let's take the test now in the next five minutes and then let's run the test live. We have tools for that. I'll show you one of the such tools in today's class. Uh, and feedback from the students is important. As I said, feedback is very essential. So we should have some tools to take the feedback, of course, anonymously. And good LMS. So all, whatever you have mentioned, all of these, right? All of these, you know, we should have it at one, at all one place. So we should have a good LMS. So these are all the tools that are required more or less. Okay, we can have much, many more. But these are all the tools that are required for a comprehensive ICT setup. So let, let's now look at the uh, overview of ICT tools in education. So first thing, as I said, we'll, we'll talk about them one by one, right? So first is presentation tools. So presentation should be more enriching. It should be more dynamic. You know, it should be more modernized. You know, it should, the student should be able to, you know, uh, look forward to your classes, right? It should be, you know, you should engage them with more ways of representing information. It is not simply type everything there and then just display and then read out whatever is written there. That is not a good presentation. You should engage them, right? By representing the information in various ways. How do we do it? We will see. Uh, I'll try to show you one, one in today's session and improved, improved student retention of material from lectures and demonstrations. So the presentation should be able to, you know, improve the student retention. So people say, you know, you, you read some, you, uh, you see something you'll remember for a longer duration rather than, you know, reading. So seeing the picture, you know, will be, will be in the minds of the students. And you should also try to simplify uh, the complex lessons or concepts. And you should, you should be able to draw, you know, on the, on the screen and, uh, you know, you should be able to use the graphics and other multimedia in the presentation itself. And most importantly, it should be appealing and eye catching. And you should be able to do it in online mode or offline mode. Right. 
so this should be possible and there should be a collaboration also so you write something and ask ask the students to uh, respond to it they should also be able to write it back or ex explain whatever so all of these like generally in a classroom we write on the board give a problem ask the student to solve it the students will come to the board and then solve it right similar thing you should be able to do it online so that's what is meant by collaboration so how do you do it we can do it right i'll talk about jamboard in today's session and try to show you that this is feasible uh, a few a few presentation tools uh, are prezi i'll talk about prezi prezi in today's session clear slide video uh, slide bean uh, canva so these are a few of the presentation tools that are available i missed to add uh, microsoft powerpoint presentation here and that's a beautiful tool uh, and uh, let me quickly compare as i said i'm trying to give you an overview so let me quickly compare the presentation tools so i am trying to compare three tools here prezi powerpoint microsoft powerpoint and canva so i'll try to highlight first thing is whether it's a free tool or a premium tool as i mentioned in my the title of the talk low cost or zero cost okay so my intention is to help the educators to have all the tools at one place with i would say zero cost okay so yeah let's look at the presentation tools so prezi powerpoint canva as i said i'll be talking i'll be comparing for all the tools i'll be comparing whether it's a free or a premium one what are the advantages pros what are the cons what are the disadvantages and what are the good features that are available in that tool so first let me start about prezi uh, prezi is free to use many features are free to use some features you know you can premium is necessary i'll show you prezi in today's session powerpoint is once again free and few things if you want to use you have to take a license uh, online uh, office so once again online office microsoft online office is free i'll try to you know uh, help you of this so you know you can get all the microsoft office tools online you cannot install it in your computer but you can do it online completely free generally if you want to get a license it will cost you some 5000 or 4000 or whatever but you can use all the microsoft tools uh, in online mode completely free of cost okay i'll i'll try to help you there and canva canva is a beautiful tool uh, it is also free and few things you know are are premium so number that's number one number two uh, what are the pros what are the advantages in prezi you have readily available templates so already there are templates you just have to modify them that's all i'll show you how to do it and in powerpoint you can annotate on the screen actually i am sharing pdf now somehow i was not able to share uh, my ppt else i would have i would have drawn and shown you something uh, that's okay so annotation and uh, present view if time permits i'll show you uh, the, the advantages of ppt you know uh, powerpoint uh, presentation or rather tips uh, of uh, powerpoint presentation how best we can utilize it so we can have we can annotate means we can tick uh, we can round we can uh, circle it we can explain all of that we can have the presenter view so presenter view means the users can see users or students can see the full screen as you are able to see but beside it i can see i can write some notes which is uh, which is visible only to me i can take the help from there i'm not doing it now don't worry <laughs> so i can take the help from there and then i can explain my ppt uh, you know by doing using those points bullet points or whatever and uh, advantage of canva you make a presentation there you, you will be able to uh, download it as a pdf or jpg or png right here also you have a lot of templates that are available uh, cons what are the disadvantages uh, so in prezi once you make the ppt i mean once you make a presentation i'll not say ppt once you make the presentation uh, you have to by default you know it is open for anyone i mean it, it's it is public it's available public so someone can use the template and then they can use it uh, utilize it you cannot restrict anyone from, you cannot stop anyone from doing it in a free uh, license so we when we sign up we'll get a free license correct basic license as they call them and uh, if you want to convert your presentation to ppt then you require a premium so pdf you can do it no problem if you want to convert it to a ppt you have to go for a premium one and uh, powerpoint 50 to 70 percent of the functionalities are free as i said rest 30 to 40 you know that uh, some functionalities are not free you know but online 
we can get almost 90% of the functionalities free. Okay, and we can get it free of cost also. Microsoft Online, uh, Canva, uh, you know, MP4 and GIF, you know, all of these are available only for the premium ones. What are the good good features of Prezi? You can do online presentation. You can do collaboration. PowerPoint also, you can do offline presentation, you can do online presentation, you can share your screen online. Collaboration, you are explaining your boss is also, you are in a meeting, or your student, you, you have a, let us say, uh, project review meeting online, happening online. So your student should be able to explain. If you have any doubts, you circle something. So same PPT, you should be able to edit. Candidate also should be able to edit simultaneously at the same time. That's the collaboration. That's possible in PowerPoint, Prezi. And Canva, the good features are you can collaborate. You have beautiful templates. I would I would say you try Canva. You will love it. Okay, there are a lot of beautiful templates that are available. So this is all about the uh, the presentation tools. Next is I personally felt you know as a teacher I felt one of the toughest things during or uh, during this online classes or sessions you know is uh, how do you explain it? I mean. If it is a class, you have a board, you write, you draw, you explain, but in the online mode, that, that is very difficult, right? So I felt out of all the tools, this was, you know, somehow, uh, somehow, you know, we teachers are not able to, you know, uh, get into this to make it more interactive, more pleasant. So whiteboard tools are very important. So it's like similar to a blackboard, right? That you use in a class. Whatever you do on a board, blackboard in your class, traditional mechanism, you should be able to do it online. Absolutely, you can do it. I'll show you OneNote today. OneNote is a beautiful tool uh, where you can use it as a whiteboard. There's one more jam board I'll, I'll also show you today. So you should be able to draw. You should be able to explain. You should be able to highlight. You should be able to annotate something. You should be able to insert the pictures. I mean, you should be able to draw the pictures, insert the pictures, and you want to save whatever you have written on the board. You want to save the complete thing as a PDF. You can do it. You download it, you share with your students. Your class is over. Blackboard, they have to write it in, in their notes. Generally, in the classroom traditional mechanism, you write on the board, they will note down in their notebook. Here, you write on the board, whatever you have written, the entire thing can be download, is downloadable. As a PDF, can you share it with the students? Beautiful, right? We can do it. You can collaborate also. At the same time, you can collaborate with the students. You are explaining something. They can also, if they have any doubts, they can, you know, ask. They they can round it off. They can do collaboration is possible. Once again, as I said, free of cost, right? I'm focusing only on my major focus is on the free tools. Examples of uh, online whiteboards. Uh, Jamboard by Google, uh, white, whiteboard.fi, Zeitboard, uh, Concept Board, Miro. Miro is a beautiful tool. Uh, Jamboard, I'll discuss Jamboard in today's session. Uh, I have not written uh, uh, Microsoft OneNote. OneNote, I would, pre I would prefer OneNote over all of these. My preference is first is OneNote followed by Jamboard. Miro is also beautiful. Okay. So I'll compare Jamboard, Miro, and OneNote. Uh, so one first thing is Jamboard, it is free. Miro, three boards, up to three boards, it is free. After that, you know, you cannot uh, uh, use it. I mean, in the sense, you have to delete the old ones and then use the new ones. OneNote is free. As I said, uh, Microsoft Office online, you can get it free, you can use it. Right, uh, you can use it. If you have original Windows license, I mean, uh, genuine Windows license, Windows 10, for example, it's already inbuilt. You can just type OneNote in your search bar. You will get Microsoft OneNote. Okay. Else, online, you can get it free. Advantages of Jamboard. It's very simple to use. I'll show you. Uh, easy to insert. You know, it's easy, simple, and you can insert pictures and other things. Miro, you can insert JPGs, PDFs, Word documents. You can insert PDF there, and online fix you can insert. OneNote, all formats you can insert PDF, Word, JPG, whatnot. You can insert a YouTube thing, link, uh, right? You can play there in the OneNote itself. Uh, you can do use it offline. You can use it online. That's the advantage of OneNote. 
disadvantages jamboard uh, no text no pdf it's updated now it's no more a disadvantage it's no more a con there now you should be able to type some text there and you can also convert to pdf i'll show you okay and miro as i said the disadvantage is only three boards are free you have to delete the old ones to move to the new ones to use it again reuse it one note as i said windows 7 and later you if you have a genuine windows 7 and later one note comes with it but with microsoft office online you can get it free Good features, collaboration, Jamboard, you can collaborate, Miro, you can collaborate. On OneNote, the advantage is you can do it online as well as offline. Jamboard and Miro, you have to do it online only. OneNote, no, your net is not there, doesn't matter. You are recording a class. Easiest way of understanding this is you want to record a class and then upload it to students. Because live, you don't have very good internet. So what you have to do? You can use OneNote as a whiteboard. Offline, it is available, whereas Jamboard, Miro, Offline, it's not available. You need to have internet. Okay, so one note is so one note is much better than others. And video conferencing tools. So obviously, right? You are interacting with the students. So you know you should be able to engage the students. You know with the with the live lectures, you should be able to share your content. You should be able to share your screen to them. You should be able to during the class. You should be able to annotate, highlight. So your video conferencing tool, be it uh, Google Meet, be it uh, Zoom, be it Cisco Webex, uh, be it Geo Meet, or whatever, they should all, they should be able to provide you this opportunity of sharing the content, annotating, highlighting. You should have the host should have a control over the participants. It's not that you are presenting and then someone suddenly shares their screen and you know that shouldn't happen. Someone suddenly speaks something that shouldn't happen. One should be able to record the sessions. Your tool should be able to allow you to record the sessions. Time of engagement is important. You know, how much free time are you getting? Because our focus is right up on free tools, right? And you should be able to chat with the participants. There should be a chat box, right? I'm sure all of you would have used chat box in your Google Meet. So thank you. The session is interesting. Something you're chatting, right? I mean, so you should be able to chat with your participants. If you have any queries, you should be able to put it the speaker in case your mic is not working you're not able to speak to be able to post your questions to the speaker in the uh, chat box so that facility should be there so a few of the video conferencing tools are uh, zoom google meet cisco webex skype go to meeting gitsi meet geo meet right uh, to name a few i'll try to compare uh, zoom google meet and cisco webex so zoom as you know it, 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 it gives you free for 40 minutes after 40 minutes once again you ask your uh, can, your students or candidates to join the same link once again it continues like this because you can continue forever i mean 40 minutes 40 minutes 40 minutes google meet for the free version you have 60 minutes if you have a institutional license so institutional license means uh, like uh, not at gmail.com you will have this dot edu dot in for example, my case it is at the rate rgkt.ac.in or .edu.in. So if you have that institutional license, this limit is not there. So Webex, you'll get 50 minutes free. Pros of Zoom, you can record it. The beauty of Zoom is you can record offline. I mean, offline in the sense uh, uh, you can record your lecture. You can download it. It gets downloaded to your system, and you should be able to upload it wherever Google Drive or wherever. And uh, and uh, the other advantages are, you know, at one shot, you can have 49 visible participants. You know, you call them as styles, right? I mean, the, the people who are there in the meeting, you can see them. At one shot, you can see, you know, four, uh, six, 49 of them. And uh, you have a whiteboard, inbuilt whiteboard in the Zoom. So this is the beauty of Zoom. You have an inbuilt whiteboard where you can write something. You can also take the attendance of the candidates, students who have, uh, you know, who have attended. And Google Meet is easy, and you can you can schedule it from the Google Calendar. Uh, it's easy because you can you can schedule it uh, every day. You have a class ten to one. I mean ten to eleven a.m. You schedule it uh, every day, and just click a link and then join. And uh, thumbnails uh, earlier it was sixteen. Now once again I think it is uh, increased to thirty plus. So thirty plus people you can see on the screen. See when you are teaching, basically you want to see whether the students are atten I mean attentive or not. It's not that uh, some teacher is speaking and they are all sleeping. They just 
so their video obviously you expect them to switch on their video and you should be able to see them whether they are listening or not their focus is somewhere else or not so that is where these thumbnails or uh, tiles you know small small pics of them i mean the video of them right so yeah in cisco webex also you should be able, you will be able to record you have a whiteboard option there you will be able to annotate and uh, 25 thumbnails you can 25 students you can see at one shot then go to the next one you can see the next 25 like that uh, cons zoom app does not allow you to record no no recording in, in zoom and gmeet also you cannot record unless you have a, a institutional license free of course institutional license is free so zoom 100 participants and uh, uh, google meet also you have you know the, the uh, limit on the participants so there's no whiteboard in the google meet now they have incorporated jam earlier it was not there now they have incorporated the jam jam board in the google meet itself so you can use that and uh, for cisco webex also you, in the app you have no recording future okay and 100 participants can attend it attend your uh, session and the good features are uh, you can share share your screen you can annotate you can record and google meet the good good features are you can share your screen right you, you directly schedule everything from your calendar and Cisco Webex, you know, you can do the screen sharing, you can annotate, you can record, all of this you could do. And next thing is video recording tools. So as I said, it's not if you are if you have good internet, very fast internet, you know, where you can do a video conferencing. I mean, using Google Meet or Zoom or other things, that's fine. But in case you do not have that fast internet, what do you do? You should be able to record your video at your home in your system and then upload it somewhere. Right? So what are the, uh, what do you expect? I mean, from a good video recording tool, number one, you should be able to record it for a longer duration, unlimited time. There should not be any watermark. Generally, whenever people say free, I mean, zero cost, obviously there's, there'll be some clause, you know, uh, associated with it. There'll be some watermark or something will be there but you don't want any watermark and should be able to save uh, the uh, save your uh, recording to system or cloud i mean so of uh, to your computer or directly to the cloud google drive or one drive or any drive it should be also it should also support online recording and offline recording there should also be some presenter options and uh, capturing sharing options you know all this should be there right for a good video recording tool a few video recording or video making tools are movely v video animoto prezi video earlier we talked about prezi presentation tool we also have a prezi video one can download it and you can they can start using it that's a beautiful tool a power soft loom recorder loom is also very good uh, loom is if you have, as I said, if you have a domain email ID, if you are a teacher, if you are an instructor, if you have an email ID like .ac.in or .edu.in, you can get Loom Premium for free. Okay. Uh, OBS, I'm sure uh, one of the past few days, I think in, in this FDP, you have, you'd have learned about OBS. OBS is also a beautiful tool, versatile tool, right, for uh, video recording. So I'm trying to compare obs a power soft and loom uh as i said since it's an overview i'm putting all at one place okay i'll give you material i'll give you uh, as i said uh, in uh, youtube there's one channel you know where i try to you know put some uh, videos on this most of these are available there at the end of it i'll share it share that with you so that whenever you have free time you can go through it whatever i'm discussing loom i said loom you can get premium how do we use loom what is the premium how do you get the premium all of that will be available i'll tell you all this at the end of the session today okay so obs a power soft and loom uh, obs is completely free a power soft it is free browser browser based version is free if you have to download it the software it is cost it, it costs you but browser based version is free loom chrome extension and desktop as app they are free so loom is good cross obs offline recording you can do online recording you can do unlimited time you can you know use it live streaming you can do from obs to youtube obs to facebook 
live streaming you can do i'm sure you would have learned it in one of the sessions earlier a power soft unlimited uh, timing no watermark that's a beauty excuse loom unlimited timing so there are options you know screen press presenter i mean you don't want your photo to come or you want your photo to come i mean photo means uh, thumbnail as you i speak as you speak options are available in loom uh, disadvantages obs you know windows xp previous you know windows xp it's not compatible with obs now we don't have windows xp generally now it's windows 7 windows 10 and all of that if you have windows xp it's not compatible uh, the downloaded one has few limitations but you can use browser based for apr soft and loom chrome extension is little you know drawback because every time generally whenever you put extension there will there will be some notifications and other stuff if you are okay with it then that's not a problem so what are the good features overall for obs you should be able to record it be able to stream it to youtube facebook other things apr soft you can there's no watermark you can save it to your system obs also you can save it to your system and uh, loom unlimited time it i mean you can record for unlimited time and you can also trim your videos the beauty of loom is you have done you are done with your session you felt something is not good you can trim it there itself in the loom uh, uh loom tool that's possible so these are this is the overview of uh, the some of the video recording tools and as i said you should have all of this in what one place so that's a learning management system where you should be able to upload the learning content study material where you should be able to deliver the lessons to the students you should be able to post the assessments you should be able to monitor the students progress you should you should be able to track the students are they attending or not attendance you should be, you should be able to collaborate with the students it's like it should be like a centralized source of learning where everything is available at one place right that's the lms for you few lms tools are google classroom edmodo i'm sure edmodo also you, you, you would have learned it as a part of this uh, program uh, edmodo is a beautiful tool i love edmodo okay, completely free of cost canvas visiq classflow microsoft teams moodle but these are a few of the lms learning management systems that are available so edmodo and google classroom are very good so i'll try to compare the the lms tools uh, i'll try to compare edmodo google classroom and microsoft teams mm. so first thing edmodo completely free google classroom free limited why it is say limited limited because if you have an institutional license it is free right uh, microsoft teams once again institutional license if you have it is free limited pros advantages the advantages of edmodo you can store your content i exactly do not remember the the number but i think you can go up to a few gb you can store it you can also use it like your uh, google drive or one drive right that that's possible okay in edmodo there is a parental uh, you know you can interact with the parents there's a special login for the parents okay there's a time limit for edmodo Google Classroom is like all at one place. So here you do not have this parental stuff, but uh, everything else you know you can share PDFs, notes, uh, your videos, everything, uh, tests, all of that is there. Microsoft Teams, it's all at one place. Cons, uh, no video integration. In Edmodo, you cannot integrate video, and each file, you know, anything greater than 100 MB, you cannot upload directly. I mean, it should be less than 100 MB if you have to upload a file in Edmodo. As it as a drive, you know, you want to save it in your drive. Okay, you are sharing something with your students. But it's greater than 100 MB, you cannot do it in Edmodo. Okay. And Google Classroom, no recording future for basic thing. And uh, uh, Teams also, no recording for basic. And there's a limit of 2 GB you know, storage per user. Uh, good features, quizzes you can give in Edmodo, material you can post, parental thing is there. Google Classroom, it's like all at one place. Microsoft Teams, you can take the attendance and it's also like all at one place. So if you want LMS, which is completely free, gives you a lot of features, a lot of things, go for it mode. Else, Google Classroom is absolutely fine. And the next important part is you have, you so far, you have recorded your classrooms or you have given a video conferencing, you have taught them, you have shared your material in the LMS you have used beautiful uh, presentation tools you have you, you have recorded everything you have done the next question is 
did the student understand whatever you have thought or not so for that you need to have some assessment tools so you should be able to assess your students right so there can be a variety of questions so you should be able to give them a variety of questions it could be multiple choice questions it could be a fill up the blanks or it could be a short answer type it should be it can be a descriptive type and most importantly whenever you give a assessment it should be auto graded it, it's easier if it is auto graded so you have 100 students in your class like that let us say you have two classes 200 students so everything you cannot grade it like you do it uh, traditionally right so it should be auto graded preferably there should also be option for manual grading because descriptive question especially uh, you cannot auto grade it if, if the answer is too large you have to manually grade it and most importantly the tests that you give the, it should be time test it's not like you share a google form link and then say okay submit it by tomorrow morning so what happens generally so <laughs> i mean in a class so first two fellows three fellows two ds fellows they will do it on their own rest all is generally okay i'm just saying on a general note so they'll simply copy and cut one shot all will submit you will suddenly realize that in only some 10 minute window out of 50 class 40 students have uploaded in the 10 minute window so there should be a timing that that should be available there should be a due date which means 11 o'clock the test starts 11 20 the test should end so this future should be there in your assessment tools it's there we can do it google forms you can do it uh, and other tools also you can do it equations you should be able to put some equations in your questions math how do you do it yes we can do it uh, equatio there's a tool right we can do it and you should go, you should be able to limit the responses so i as a student should submit my test only once i cannot keep on submitting it so you should limit the responses once i submit that's all it's gone i cannot resubmit it again we should be able to limit the responses it gives you the report report generation and uh, you should be able to share it with your uh, students so their marks that they have scored or grades that they have scored okay all this should be feasible so what are a few, a few assessment tools that are available are book widgets wiser.me go formative educaplay testmos testmos is good but there are some limitations there google forms is really good microsoft forms is also really good okay so these are a few assessment tools that are available so i'll try to compare uh, google forms microsoft forms and testmos in uh, today's session so all of these are free test form testmos is free but there are some limitations there what are the advantages in google forms you can you can have a variety variety of questions you can limit the rest, time is there time you can put time microsoft forms you have you can have a variety of questions you have a math editor inbuilt math editor in microsoft forms you can time your test inbuilt this is beautiful for google forms you have to put an external thing right but for microsoft forms you need not do it there's an inbuilt timer that's there and testmos there's a variety thing uh, you can means variety means uh, you can ask mcqs you can ask fill in the blanks like that or you can drop down all of it is there there's a limit you can limit the responses here microsoft form then if you if i'm talking about the free version microsoft form the disadvantage is you cannot limit the responses that's the only disadvantage so cons so add-ons so yeah if you want to add math to the google form you need to have some extra add-on you want to time your test in google form you need to have an extra add-on microsoft form the drawback is you cannot limit a candidate to one response no he can answer any number of times that's the only drawback if you have a license see i'm talking about a free version whatever pros cons all that i'm telling for all the tools i'm talking majorly for free versions if, if someone wants to go for premium premium everything will be there except for a few you know uh, uh, facilities rather so microsoft forms free version you cannot limit them test mode free version 50 questions uh, you can give at one shot whereas other things th this limit is not there and uh, uh, 100 test takers data i mean so you can have 100 candidates taking the test at one shot at one time good features you can get the you can analyze the responses which student has answered it correct wrong average which question was most of them have answered which question uh, uh, very few have answered all that could be there auto graded 
they submit their marks are available auto graded so microsoft forms once again responses uh, uh, will be there analysis you can do summary link the advantage the beauty of microsoft forms is you can get a summary link let us say your hod or your principal says okay show me the summary of your class performance so what so here you you will simply get a link in the microsoft forms once you you can share that link to your uh, hod or principal he'll click the link and he'll see the uh, performance of your students that's there in microsoft forms test mode is very simple straightforward easy to use auto graded of course it has limitations of 50 questions and 100 takers test takers at one shot yeah and i said exam or assessment like should not be like students should not feel like oh my goodness there's a test oh they should not get worried it should be like a game they should enjoy it so game based student response system gaming based assessments should also be feasible so you should be able to transform temporarily your classroom online virtual classroom or no into a game show where the teacher is the host and the students are the contenders competitors i mean they're all playing it's like kon baranga karorpati something like that there should be a feeling of fun interest enthusiasm curiosity in the students to play that of course you are assessing it i will also play one at the end of the session today you should be able to engage your students by applying the principles of the game that is you know points will be their progression so you should tell them beforehand that you know what are the points that they will get each question will carry how many points uh, uh, after two questions they should be see their progress where do they stand there should be a leaderboard who is standing first who is standing next i mean who is first who is second who is third like that the progression they should be able to understand they should feel that competition fastest fingers first so a candidate answers it faster he should get more points that is possible it should be able to you know make the students to focus completely full focus involvement and enjoyment in the process of learning and at the end of it there should be a report generation and sharing so it's not that you put a test and that's all you should be able to get a report of it and then means marks how how many which student has got how many marks and you should be able to share it with the students all of this should be feasible in a good gaming assessment tool a few gaming assessment tools are as follows uh, quizalize kahoot quizlet mentimeter geopardy labs nearpod kahoot is good mentimeter is really good i'll try to show you mentimeter today so i'll compare mentimeter kahoot and quizzes uh, all are available for free and premium also few few uh, uh, few uh, futures are not available in the free version but i think we can use free free versions that's more than sufficient for us for example mentimeter you know you can have 500 test takers you could have a variety of questions but you can have only 10 questions in the free version that's okay i mean out of generally we do it for 10 marks right i mean that, that will like a gaming quiz gaming assessment that's fine you can have a timer you can have a leaderboard all of that is possible in mentimeter kahoot you can have a variety of questions you can have music background music being played you can have different question question sets 50 test takers only mentimeter you can have a large number and quizzes you have variety of options you can get a parents report fastest fingers first is there in quizzes mentimeter also the fastest fingers first is there 25 test takers alone in the free version not premium version so a lot of questions are there in mentimeter question varieties reports you should be able to get you have a timer also in mentimeter kahoot you have app kahoot app you have a music you have a leaderboard and you have a timer and uh, you have variety of questions and there's a library available in quizzes you can use the library directly and ask questions from there and you have a timer also so i prefer mentimeter kahoot followed by kahoot and quizzes and apart from all these tools there are the other tools which i am calling it as a productivity tools like google docs google docs is a beautiful tool you can use so much with that excuse google sheets google forms all of these fall under google docs google uh, uh, presentation all of that fall under google docs edpuzzle is another beautiful tool that's there uh, i'll just talk i'll mention one thing about edpuzzle see uh, you have uh, let us say Uh, you are listening to some session okay some english language or any other language 
presentation is beautiful it's in youtube let us say a small video 10 minute video yes the, the presentation is awesome it's really good you are physics teacher or math teacher you love it but it's in some other language uh, let us say anything i mean uh, african language or any english language or whatever you, but you want to share it with your uh, with your students in your local language i mean mother language telugu or tamil or anything kannada or hindi or whatever so for the same video for the same presentation you should be able to give a voice over at the end of it you should be able to record the entire thing at the end of it it's like it's your it's your presentation presentation is of course obviously the courtesy will be there that's okay it personally is legal it's completely uh, available free of cost and so you should be able to do that that's the first thing second thing is as a student switch on the video 10 minute video is he is he going through the complete video or not we can track it using ed puzzle tool number three in between after three minutes you have explained a concept you want to ask some question at three minutes you can place a question he should answer that question to move forward if he answers it wrong he'll go back all of this is available in ed puzzle i have already made a video on ed puzzle i'll i'll share it with you i mean education is slido poll so i said some starting i said poll is important you should be able to take a poll of whether the students are uh, understanding or not you you want to get a feedback how good are you teaching if you are a good teacher uh, you should be able to know after one or two classes you should take a feedback from the students how is it are you okay are you comfortable or does something needs to be changed is the presentation okay are you able to follow it a good teacher will always review himself and see that his students would get the best slido poll is one good tool that's available free of cost again and 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 uh, digital notes as i said uh, one note you can have it as a digital notes evernote google keep all of these are examples of digital notes you saw some pdf somewhere you want to keep it all at one place like a notebook you can use one note or evernote or google keep as your notebooks you can place physics math chemistry all of that you can do it online using these tools mind maps uh, i think this is the last one if i'm correct so mind maps uh, graphical representation of information there are a lot of information if you simply write it a b c d it is boring i mean of course i don't know if you are feeling boring right now uh, so if you write like this it, it's boring so what you should do you should do something creative i mean your representation of the information visualization of the information i mean the student sees you should be able to you know see a picture there rather than text so graphical representation is important and it should also enable one to see a bigger picture at a glance so which is the source main concept core concept sub concept sub 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 concept like that that should be possible it should encourage the flow of ideas and it should be more organized right it should be more creative and it should allow you to generate unique ideas in less time you should use different colors images keywords as i said you see something you remember for a longer duration so it enhances your memory your means your students memory and retention power and radiant thinking it should have a clearer more natural more efficient logical way of using our brains mind maps do this for example this is a mind map of ICT tools in education for faculty. The central theme is ICT tools in education. And then there are sub branches, assessment, LMS, video, quiz, infographics, digital notes. And in that further, what are the ones that are available? Right? I, I'll show you that mind map next. So yes, so ICT tools in education are for all the teaching faculty. They're all simple and straightforward. And once we get them, get a grip on them, you can have better teaching and in turn it leads to better society right so let's not witness the digital transformation let's be a part of the digital transformation so let me stop sharing this uh, just give me a minute all right so yeah so uh give me two minutes uh so next i'll be i'll be talking on a few terms uh, I'll be showing you Jamboard. I'll be showing you uh, one note and one more thing, right? So I hope it's okay. Uh, Kamalji, one or two minutes. 
Yeah, okay, sir. Just one minute, hardly one minute. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah one minute. Uh, all right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll, we shall continue. I think we have uh, 50 more minutes with us. Yeah. I'll try to show you at least three to four uh, tools, right? And then I'll tell you about the uh, place, you know, where most of the tools are available. Uh, for that, let me now uh, share my, um, yeah, let me share uh, a window, which window I should share. Yeah, I should share this window. All right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, can someone please confirm if you're able to see my screen? Yeah. Yes, sir. It is as well. Okay. Can you see Prezi over there? Prezi. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay. Okay. So first thing is, I want to show you uh, uh, a beautiful tool, you know, with which you can make presentations. That's Prezi. Free free version is available. You can make uh, your presentation. First, I'll just show you, uh, you know, how does it look like? How does your presentation look like? Maybe let me open uh, any of it. Let me present it to you so that uh, you can understand how, uh, what, how does Prezi look like? So the theme, just give me a minute. Uh, okay. So the theme here is, uh, let us say ICT tools in education. You are giving a presentation on the ICT tools in education. So you have various ways of representing it, right? Now let me show you how I can represent the same information using Prezi. <coughs> Mainly, you can make it very catchy. I mean, you can make your presentations very catchy, very lively. Let's start. I'm not going to explain, but I'll just show you what are things are there. So first thing is, first slide, you know, gives you over, overview. You'll, you'll talk, you'll say that, okay, there's a hybrid learning, there's online learning, you should have a good ICT setup. And at the end of it, once you have all of this, you now become a updated teacher, right? So let's do it one by one. So let's now talk about hybrid learning. What is hybrid learning? Blended learning, traditional learning, online tools. So what is traditional learning? Classroom teaching, you can add any number of such bubbles here online tools so what is what do you mean by online tools what do they do how how will they complement right so you have a major theme and then you can further go deep into that theme now next is online learning right you can explain about it what are the interactive tools that are there what are the terms that are there right so all of that you can add more whatever you want next what do you mean by a good ict setup so you should have a complete setup so there are lots of them so what are the necessary tools? What are the necessary digital tools for your classroom, right? You should, you should have all the tools, you know, inclusive uh, in your uh, setup, right? So, and then once you have all the tools, you are updated now with the technology, right? So you can, you are now ready to deliver your talk, right? So, yes. So this is how you can uh, present your, presentation to the audience i mean to the to the students so for this there are there are already available templates as i told you for example just i'll just show you one thing for example let's see this 
let's see this this is some template made by someone okay you can rename it to your your thing you can change everything right all of that you can do so for example i'm just showing some random presentation the main intention of showing you this is you can see how beautifully you know you can you can put some video so you can include some videos you can include pictures you can you know you can see the animation that is happening here right the same presentation all of you can use wherever this matter is there you can replace this matter wherever this matter is there you can replace this matter with your own so that's easy for you right so you just go to that particular presentation and then you know you you, you can just rename it i made a complete video on uh, prezi uh, how do we use prezi you can go through it later as i said uh, today is just a overview so my intention is to see that you get to know lots of tools right and detailed explanation you can uh, look at it later so if you see on the left side you have a prezi video prezi design prezi present so this is prezi presentation you can also try the prezi video okay later so i said for example there are so many templates that are available you can if you go to home page for example i go to home page you can search here uh, this is okay you can search here you can search uh, you know that's a icp so you will get uh, what all presentations are there related to icp so you will get here so and you you can just you can just you know make a copy you can see here make a copy and you rename it and you can start editing and uh, incorporate whatever you want in that right you can add collaborators you can download you can export it to pdf you can download the presentation right you can share the link so once if you see here let us say there is a presentation you can see create a new link so you can create this link you can can you all see a link here so you can create a new link and then share it with your uh, students right they can go through it or if it is a interactive presentation you want them also to explain something you want them also to do something you can add collaborators here so you can add collaborators so what they can do should they only comment should they they can also present or they can also edit there are a lot of features i am not going to go into greater details of this so this is how you can make uh, your presentation very beautiful okay so this is about prezi free version is more than sufficient for us okay as teachers and as i said the entire uh, presentation we should be able to download it i'll just show you that and then i'll so export pdf now you can see i uh, what i'm i doing earlier there were some 19 slides i have shown you right so now i am exporting all of them into a pdf so i'll get slide by slide you can share this pdf with your students okay uh, so it's exporting it's taking little time don't worry it's already done save pdf uh, and i'll just just to show you you know uh, how does it look like so yeah now you can see slide 1 slide 2 slide 3 slide 4 right free version whatever i am showing is a free version so prezi video prezi presentation tool is a very good tool next let me show you one beautiful tool which is jamboard i said whiteboard tool jamboard so just type in jamboard.google.com right it will take you to this click on the right right corner right below right side below corner you have plus when you click on the plus it will create a new jam you can see untitled jam okay as i said i use jamboard as a whiteboard okay so let me now name it so i c t f d p it can be two something you can write your subject name or whatever now you can see a whiteboard here you can change the background you can make it black if you are particular about blackboard you can you can change it to like these dots or if you are drawing something you can put it like a graph sheet 
check boxes there are a lot of options available so if you want your own thing you can add a background image also so right now that's not our intention so let me leave it now you should be able to write so choose your pen you want a pen you want a marker let me show you let me choose some color red uh, let me this is pen this is marker this is highlighter you want to highlight something this is a brush so whatever you want you can do and you have written something you want to clear this frame this one board we call it as a frame you want to clear this frame click clear frame and everything is gone okay or you want to cl clear a specific thing you have an eraser so you can use a eraser and you can you, you erase it manually if some part of it you want to erase you can use eraser everything on the screen you want it to go just say clear frame right now let me just choose a, a pen now let me start writing something so let me write uh, fdp and uh, let's let's say you are explaining something you know you want to draw a circuit so i'm doing it with my mouse by the way i don't have a what is that i mean tab or anything like that it's just a mouse i'm using a mouse and then trying to write or draw something so this is the advantage of this whiteboard so you can write you can draw if you want to put some shapes you can put it circle you can vary the size right similarly you want to write some box you can choose the text box here so hello something you can move this wherever you want right and you want to explain something to us so once this this frame is finished you can go to top top you have next frame so go to the next frame let me let's say you want you, are, you want to explain something to your students so let me so you can upload a file of jpg right you can upload it from your system you can upload it by url you can upload it by camera you can upload it by google image search or you can do it from your google drive let me just let me just do it let me just pick up one pick randomly right elephant so click on whatever you like and then say insert let's say you are a biology teacher or whatever environmental teacher anything you can do it for anything i'm just taking some examples so now take this so you can duplicate this you can delete it whatever it is so now you can start explaining so, so any color of your choice so you can now say okay these are the eyes of elephant you know this is the trunk of the elephant or these are the legs you have a tail right and this is the sky over there this is grass you can start explaining so all of this you could do here and then you want let us say by mistake you know you have written this so you can simply erase as i have said sometime back right so like this you can uh, insert images and then you can start explaining to your students or for example you want to highlight something but you do not want whatever you have highlighted to remain on the screen for example here so far whatever i have highlighted the eyes the trunks the legs it, it's already there in green color but you don't want it to happen so what do you do what do you do now simply let us say see this is the sky now uh, these are the eyes of elephant this is the trunk of the elephant so now this is a magic tool so automatically it goes off after in in one second so you can see these are so these are the legs of the elephant so like this also you can do you can as i said you can type something right and that that could be retained so now like this you can use uh, your jamboard now what all you can do you can you can present this to a meeting means you have a google meet it is linked up with it's a google product right so it linked up with so let us see i'll say i'll say this getting so present tab to a meeting now i can present this to you all so you can it is showing that already there is a google meet in progress and i can share this jamboard with all of you right and then i can explain right share now next is collaboration i want not only me to i want not only me to edit there i want all of you to edit i mean so anyone with the link can do what you can be the editor so now when i share this you can also start tick uh, highlighting you can also start drawing you can also start typing it's possible here right you just have to share this copy link and then share it with all of you 
right what else i can do see i can rename this that is okay i can download this as a pdf let me do that and i can save the frame or as a image you want only this frame by frame you want only this elephant fellow highlighted thing you just save it as a you know frame as a image you remove you make a copy make a copy means it will create one more copy rename it okay so let me just show you see, yeah this the pic that i have downloaded just now this is how it is uh oh i think you're not able to see it because you will see only this tab that's fine so i can download it as you can see both of them are downloaded the jpg as well as the pdf so this is the beauty as i said whatever you write on your whiteboard you should be able to save it download it and share it with your students all that is feasible uh in the jamboard right yeah so this is the beauty of jamboard if you are using google classroom you can also use jamboard to give ass assignments assessments for assessment purposes also you can give uh, attach a jam the option will be there in google meet as i said already uh, uh, there will be one option use jamboard so there you can use jamboard it is like a whiteboard you can use it so like that how many frames i will get how many boards i will get at one shot for one for one class or for one session for for example ict fdp 2022 i can get 20 such frames you can see this 20 beyond 20 no you can't create any more frames so 20 pages i mean 20 boards you can get all right if you want to jump to any of them so you can see here 1 to 20 you can jump directly i am in 20 now i want to go to one quickly you can move to one or two whatever right so and you can download all the 20 slides i mean 20 boards you know 20 frames as a pdf so this is the beauty of jamboard as i said miro is one another beautiful tool and uh, one note is another beautiful tool so let me close this jamboard here and uh, next one i wanted to show you one productive tool which is one lens i always felt you know as a teacher generally you know when you go to library you you will have only books for reference you cannot carry along with it you have some important information that's available right you cannot photo maybe you can photocopy it but you cannot you know uh, take it to your home so what do you do now it's all digitalized everything is digital so you should be able to quickly digitalize it so take a phone take some pics <coughs> and convert it to pdf right or you are going somewhere there in a notice board something is kept you want that photo is okay but you want it to be more beautiful more organized you want it to be like a pdf for that i am sure you are aware of it there are some apps uh, cam scanner is one app one lens microsoft one lens is another beautiful app cam scanner is uh, you know uh, what do you say it, it's banned right by the government of india so i won't prefer cam scanner i will prefer either adobe scan or i i personally prefer microsoft one lens so it's it's a uh, microsoft one lens is a free pocket scanner uh so i i cannot explain you in live so i i have already done a video on it so i want you to just go through it because it is versatile it has beautiful features uh, i hope i can play it just let me know if you can hear the audio okay i'll play it right now just let me know if you are able to hear the audio i need not change any settings right now okay let me see are you able to hear the audio of it yes no please yes sir uh, of the of the youtube thing that i have played are you able to hear the audio yes no sir no sir uh, oh, not able to okay okay that's fine Mm -hmm. all right that's okay mm -hmm. okay just give me a half a minute let me see what i can do okay mm, oh fine that's okay let me stop presenting this then let me see what i can mm. 
me one minute uh, Shit, uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, just let me know now if you're able to hear the audio. I just played for one, uh, 10 seconds. Welcome you all to this session on Microsoft One Lens. It's a free tool. Yeah, are you able to hear the audio? Yes, sir. All right, great. So it's just a 10 minute thing, but I'm sure it'll be very helpful to you. So let me just play it. Uh, Microsoft Office One Lens is like a scanner in your pocket. I would say much more than that. So one can scan, you know, printouts, you know, or handouts or any important notes, or you can, uh, you know, copy it, take a snap of your whiteboard, cards, etc. You can also convert images to PDF, Word, and PPT files, and you can also store all of these to OneDrive. So now just let us so get to know more details about this. So just, uh, let me now. Go to my mobile and uh, so now go to Play Store as you can see now here. So you can type Microsoft One Lens. The moment I type Microsoft One Lens, you know, you can see here Microsoft Office Lens PDF Scanner. So let me click on that. Now you can see, so you can, you know, install it. I've already installed it. So let me open that. Now the moment I open it, so this is the, you know, One Lens home thing. Now I can. There are different modes, as you can see here, whiteboard, document, business card, photo. So what I'll do is it's a document, right? So let me put it in the document mode. Now you can see it is auto detecting, okay? The area that is that needs to be scanned as shown by the red color there. Let me click that. Now you can see that it has come up, but I'm not, you know, it, it's not satisfactory. So I'll just go back, I'll discard this and then I'll, uh, you know, do it again. So now, okay, it's fine. So now I'll just save it. So done. And you can see here, so you can save it as whatever. So chapter one, reading material two, something like that. I mean, you can save it as per your will and wish. Now you can see different formats here. So one is the gallery, you know, PDF, OneNote. So I want, let us say, I want this to look like a photo or you want to save it as a PDF. Now you can do that. So you simply say save, it would save that. Now you can see this is a photograph and uh, this is a PDF file. So now it can show you the PDF file. Okay. So now, so let me go to the next one. So now let me open one more. So now let me put it as a, you know, photo now, because I want to show, let us assume that it's a photograph. Now you can, you can focus it manually. Now you can see, you know, this green one, you know, I'm putting it manually or you can do the other one, automatic focusing, anything you will do. Let me take a pic of that. And here you can crop it. Now, this is the crop tool, top second. Now I can crop it manually, you can see. I can, I'm cropping it. Now you can see I, I'm cropping it, no whatever is necessary, I'm just putting it. And then I'll say confirm here. So you can see here, and there are a few filters available here. Now you can see auto, sepia. Yeah, there are different things, I mean, so grayscale, you know, pure white and black, I mean, Whichever thing you want, you know, you can uh, save it. So let me, we put it in the, you know, let me not use anything here. So now on this, I can also scribble something. Now you don't, you don't want, you know, all of this, you only want to highlight, you know, what is important here. So maybe I can use a tool here. Now I'll just say, okay, this is important for me. So I'll just highlight this area or there is some, let us say there is some important point here. I'll just highlight this area. So you can do that. You can also write something if you want. Okay. So background, no background. So I'll just say it's something like this, the tool, and then you can put it wherever you want. Okay. So you can, so yeah. 
so you can put it wherever you want so but i don't want it uh, to look like this so yeah this is fine for me and i'll just make a side just put it here and then once again you can add more pages to it so add new is there to the left here so you can just click on that it you can add more pages but right now it's okay i'm okay with one page so and then you can save this okay so the next one would be i can do the same with cards also so what i'll do is you know maybe i'll take a card right now and then you can just scan the card so now because generally cards you don't want to you know uh, keep them you know you don't want to have them you don't have a collection of them you don't want to have a collection of them so you can just simply scan it and then put it uh, you know put the copy of this once again you can crop it so same features that we have seen you can just crop it and yeah and you can rotate it you can see this here you can rotate it and as i have said you can highlight things here also okay so done and once again you can save it in different formats and you can name them now there is one more feature here you can see here immersive reader so i'll click on that now what it will do is it will read out the text from text you know from that particular thing now i you can see it for yourself here let me click that s chandra kesh roshan and dot tech assistant professor faculty in charge training and now you can see this was this was the content you know that was there you know on our uh, uh, on the you know card you can see so that that just reading out what in, what is there so that's the beauty of immersive reader now another thing what i want to do is i want to let us say i have a document with me so let me have the document and this is one more beautiful aspect of this tool so let us say i have the document now let me scan this document and so let me scan it and uh, so let me say done it looks okay now what i'll do is you can see here i'll uncheck all of this i'll click this word document you can at the same time you can save in other formats also doesn't matter i'll say word document and you can also save it to my one note you know we also talked about one note right or you can save it to your one drive also so now let me save save it to all of this so i'll will concentrate on this word osia document so let me save it so now it is saving all the different types that we wanted to save now let me open the word document there is something very interesting that comes up now the picture that you have taken you know it's called as ocr optical character recognition so what it does is you know all the content is now editable i mean that's the beauty of it so all of that that we have seen you know you can now edit it see uh, so i think it, it unless the scanning is not good or something like that it would give you all the content that is available now this is the beauty you know the, this is the best part of it uh, so you can extract you know the text from these images so or other one you can do the same with any picture also for example let me just go back let me just go back and then uh, probably show you so this is a picture that's available and you can see there is some uh, content written on that so i'll just scan it so maybe i'll just put document so that it will auto check you know auto scan that now yeah now it has taken it so now let me say done and uh, once again let me save it as a you know gallery pdf so jpg and pdf and let me also put a word and then see what happens So once again, this is the normal picture that you have saved. That's that looks good, and uh, it also saves as a PDF. Now let me show you the Word document. It's a OCR document, optical character recognition. So whatever text is there on it, so it it comes up here. So you can see, you can see. Okay, so all of that, and below that, in the same Word document, you can see the document that's there. Okay, so this you can see the document that is there. So the text that's available. you know is captured here and uh, the document itself and uh, what else can we do as we said as we have you know seen you can you can uh, save all of this to your uh, you know one note so that, that that's very beautiful so there's one more uh, thing white board so what it does is you know you you capture a picture and then uh, you so, so you can see the background contrast you know it will save automatically so let me crop it let me just uh, crop it manually 
and uh, yeah so let me crop it here and then let me say confirm now it's done so you can save it your gallery pdf and uh, yeah you can save it your powerpoint also and you can rename it so now as you have said it automatically syncs with your OneNote and OneDrive. So you just go back to your OneNote and OneDrive and then you can recover, you know, you can see that all of this data is available, you know, readily to you. Now, this is the beauty of uh, this uh, Microsoft Office Lens. Now, as you, can, as, as you have seen, we can uh, take a quick uh, copy of the printout. Now, you can convert it to PDF or keep it as image itself. Or you can also extract the text from the document as you have seen using this OCR uh, mechanism. So it's, it's very simple. It's just point and shoot mechanism. You just point towards the document and then you shoot it and that's it. And you also have this immersive reader. So I would say that that's a very you know, versatile tool that's available. And uh, so this is all about Microsoft uh, Office One Lens. Uh, all right, so that's about uh, Office One Lens. Uh, I hope you uh, like that, and uh, I hope you can start using it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So next, I wanted to show you one thing. Yeah, uh, I'll talk about the gaming tool. Then I'll talk about the uh, one more thing. So first, I said assessments. You know, it should be like a game, right? I said Kahoot, Quizzes, Quizalize, Mentimeter is another one like that. So this is the Mentimeter, just type mentimeter.com and then you have to create an account, simple, give you username, password, it will create an account. You can make a lot of presentations <clears throat> or gaming assessments you can do. Uh, let's play one small thing, next five minutes, right? So already I have made one. So what I will do right now is, oh wait, uh, first thing is I think you're not able to see the screen. All right. Yeah. So now I hope you can you all see my screen? Yes. Can someone please confirm? Are you all able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So yeah, mentimeter.com. So when you say mentimeter.com, it will take you to this. Uh, and then you have just how to log in. I'm already logged in. So basically your name and whatever, right? So now you can make a lot of presentations. Now I, I'm going to present one thing. Small text, some three, four questions based on whatever you have listened so far. So what I'll do is uh, share, copy link. Now go to your Google Meet. I'm going to share you in the in the text box. I'm going to. I have entered a link, right? I hope all of you can see it in your chat box. Please click on the link. Uh, please click on the link. And then it is, uh, it will show me, you know. Please join there. Please give your names. I want most of you to join this. Only three have joined so far. I'll wait for a minute for others to join. No, it's not a test. I'll not give the marks and I'll not, <laughs> we'll not do all of that. It is just for fun. Please click the link that's available in the Google Meet and then just join it. There'll be a couple of questions, simple questions which you have to answer. It will take only one minute. Please click on the link and join there. All right, I have six, six candidates now. No problem, we'll start. So yeah, so get ready, we'll start it. So read the rules, all correct answers will give you maximum points. Yeah, look at the question. You can see the question now. Now you can see the options available. So please answer whatever you feel is correct. Google Classroom is an example of. 
TMS, LMS, video recording tool. No one has answered so far. Oh. All right. Okay, next question. Please read the question on your screen and quickly give an answer. What is the second question? A power soft is an example of CMS screen recorder whiteboard. Actually, you are answering seven of them have you of have answered, but since the numbers are less, it is not showing up on my screen. That's okay. Uh, three of you have given it a screen recorder, correct? Two of you wrong, two of you wrong, right? I can also look at the leaderboard. Yeah. Look at the next question now. So next question. Which gaming assessment are we playing now? Simplest question. Let's see what you'll answer. Is it Kahoot? Is it Mentimeter? Is it Nearpod? Is it Quizlet? I can see five have answered so far. Six, seven. All right. Eight of you have answered. Nine of you. So yes, Mentimeter. Correct, correct, correct. We can also look at the leaderboard. So, yeah. So currently, Sahibag, Mr. Sahiba Gauda is leading. Yes. Finally, the fastest is Mr. Sahiba Gauda. Congratulations. So this is how uh, you know we can use Mentimeter to make it more interesting. So detailed, detailed video on how to make these questions, how to make the students play, all of this is, is, is available. So what I'll do is next five, five minutes, I'll, I'll try to help you with the detailed videos of all these more, more, most of these rather. Uh, so let me just uh, exit this. And uh, so I, I have made a YouTube channel. The name of it is help ever ICT tools for education. If you just Google help ever ICT tools for education in YouTube, it will take you there. So you need not subscribe anything. I'm not at all interested in subscribers. My only intention was to help the fellow faculty. So if you find any videos interesting, please go through it. I'll quickly tell you what all things will be available there. So detailed video on online assessments is there. Uh, and then overview of ICT tools is there. Complete tutorial on Google Classroom. Gmeet, how do you take attendance and background blurring. Uh, this is Microsoft Office Online completely free. So how do you, as I said, OneNote, I'm talking about OneNote, I talked about PPT, I mean, Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. I, as I said, you can get all of these completely free if you are using it online. How you can get it for yourself, you can do it here. PPT tips for teachers. Actually, I wanted to show this today, but it's okay. You can go through it. Microsoft forms for assessments. Loom. I told you, you know, Loom is a screen recorder. And you can also get the premium version for free. How do you do it? How can you get it? You can do it, get it from here. Edu Edpuzzle. I told you about that video example, right? So Edpuzzle, gaming assessment tools, Mentimeter. We have just played Mentimeter, right? So how do you do it in greater detail? How do you make these questions? How will you share the details with the students? All that is available here. Uh, uh, generally in assessments, Google document rule uh, ex uh, questions, you cannot put math equations, right? So how do you incorporate mathematical expressions? Equatio, using equation you can do Prezi, detailed information on Prezi. How do you get dynamic and eye-catching presentations? You can use, I mean, you can go through this. Uh, OBS, live streaming to YouTube, how to use OBS, how to record using OBS and uh, Code Cog, once again, to incorporate mathematical expressions, whiteboards, Miro whiteboard. I talked about Jamboard today, right? I've explained this Jamboard. One note, I have not explained. Miro board, I have not explained. You can please go through it. Assessment tools, test uh, Google Forms and certificates. There was a craze in the last one year. A uh, lot of webinars, a lot of stuff. You give some questions, they'll answer, they'll get a certificate automatically to their mail. Certify M, how do you do that? All of that. One lens, what I've shown you today. Uh, and then OneNote. Yeah, please go through the, this OneNote. I, out of all these, I love OneNote because of its versatility. 
it has beautiful features we talked about the immersive reader right it is also available in one note you copy something from i said it's a digital notes you can use it as a whiteboard you can use it as a digital notes you copy something from somewhere in the internet paste it in the one note it will show you the source later whenever you want to go back it will show you the source click on that it will take you to the source this is one, one another beautiful aspect of one note cisco a power soft jamboard uh, jamboard edmodo google classroom a complete setup of ict tool so these are the ones that are available so i just repeat the name in youtube just type in help ever ict tools in education uh, it will take you here if, if you find it interesting please go through it you need not subscribe and all of that not required okay so yes so let me stop sharing my screen uh, another 2 minutes i'll take and then i'll stop 120 i'll stop maybe 10 minutes we can have questions uh, i wanted to share you share with you one more thing uh, let me just open that pdf all right so let me just okay uh, let me just share the pdf oh window all right yeah i hope you are able to see the pdf right yes can someone please confirm are you able to see the pdf yes no anyone please yes sir it is visible all right so this is a comprehensive setup that i i i just put together for the benefit of all the faculty i hope you can see it in full screen uh, yeah maybe uh, this is good enough whatever so, so i this the overall thing is idea is a mind map idea okay so the central theme is this and other other things are this my intention is to just show you yeah let me i think this is so what i have done is i have just listed out all possible things that are available i mean most of them rather i'll just explain one of it for example assessment so book widgets wiser.me go formative educa play test mode google forms microsoft forms besides this there is a, uh, a, a you know that that inter, uh, globe thing right so you click on that it will take you to the website you click on this it will take you to wiser click on this it will take you to the go formative it will click on this like that you click on this it will take you to the google form so that's the first thing so directly using this pdf you need not go to google type google forms and just click here it will take you to the website number one number two here there are two things you can see fr fr is freemium freemium means free plus premium f f is completely free so freemium you will get to know whether uh, that particular tool is free or it has free version as well as premium thing so that listed there and you can see beside uh, each of them you can see a mobile symbol and a small laptop like symbol so mobile means that app is also there uh, laptop means web version <coughs> is available for example test mode right there is no app there is only a web version for example uh, the, the the book widgets you can you, can, you have a android app also similarly edmodo i'm talking about this one edmodo edmodo you have it's completely free you click here it will take you to the edmodo home home page there is a app there is a web version so like that i have listed out uh, all the tools that makes a comprehensive ict setup so starting from mind maps the one that i have done is using mindomo you can use mindmister iowa coggle poplet assessment productivity tools learning management systems in my ppt earlier i have shown you all of these right so i have added few more here so presentation tools video conferencing tools online whiteboards video recording must have must have tools scanner apps office lens scan board adobe scan what i have shown you is office lens infographics canva adobe spark you know vocabulary snappy words word reference graph words quizzes quizalize kahoot all of it i have shown you so you click on any of it it take you to that particular thing digital notes so this is completely free uh, i'll share it with the organizers so that anyone any of you are interested you can uh, uh, have it readily available and also below that i have summarized what all uh, what each of it does you know so mind maps mindmo what it does mindmister like that i have done it for all the uh, tools that are listed 
so i hope this will be very helpful to you in case it is helpful please feel free to use it so yeah let me close this and uh, let me uh, i think i am done uh, from my side mm, uh, time is 120 now yeah maybe 10 more minutes i can take uh, any questions yes or any comments anything else yeah i am done from my side yes so thank you all for your patient uh, listening i hope the session is helpful to uh, you all yeah thank you very much sir thank you very much for a very detailed uh, demonstration based uh, wonderful uh, session uh, participants if you have any specific query you can unmute your mic and you can ask it to the expert sir is available to take up the questions if you have any query kindly unmute your mic and post your questions so most probably there won't be any questions because uh, it's a short session is very uh, practical oriented with the demonstration sir uh, sorry for not joining uh, with you that's okay mr shekhar no, i understand that beginning of the session not i guess not at all not at all not at all uh, i attended one of uh, sars uh, workshop uh, which uh, fetch me a microsoft innovate educator uh, certificate and uh, that's how i came across this session so it's a very informative and wonderful session at a bunch of all these youtube channels and, uh, and the things so that's why i wanted to have uh, him as a expert for the session and uh, i hope uh, many of you uh, gone through his uh, session they are all uh, very informative packed i uh, hope you are all enjoyed the session and the most uh, you will be using all the tools explained by the sir in your session Still, if you have any query, you can uh, unmute your mic and uh, you can uh, ask. Uh, the uh, uh, just, yeah, thank you, Mr. Shekhar, Dr. Shekhar Ji. Thank I just you. put the YouTube link in the chat box. As I said, I'm not interested in subscribers at all. If okay. you find things interesting, please go through it. I mean, it will be helpful, you know, for you to, to become a better teacher. Okay. Yeah. PDF. I'll share it with uh, Mr. Dr. Shekhar, and he'll share the material PDF to all of you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Participants, do you have any query, or otherwise we can end up the session? Rakesh, sir, this is Sahib Gora. Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, that sir. online educator course, uh, it, it, is it discontinued, or you are uh, just uh, running that course, sir? Which one, sorry? Online educator course, sir. Uh, sir, told now, just now, sir. That means, sir. Ah, uh, no, no. I mean, I means I am not getting time to run it again. I mean, maybe I'll run it sometime. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, we want to place that opportunity again for our other faculties. If you run that uh, Microsoft certified uh, that uh, course, kindly let us know, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'll update you in case I have any plans in the near future. Not immediately, not in the next one, two months for sure. Yeah, later okay. for sure. Yeah, whenever. I... Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, we can observe from the comments that your session was very wonderful and informative. I think they don't have any more uh, queries. Still, if they have query, you already shared your YouTube videos links. Yes, yes, yes. Participants will definitely go through the links. Yeah, yeah. feel free. Videos. Yeah, please feel yes, free to. Thank you, Mr. Yeah, Inspector, for yeah. the busy schedule you made it to the session. My pleasure. My pleasure. So once and again, also, and yeah. also we must thank for readily accepting our invitation to join the session and deliver the session. So, and because of the polytechnic and department of mechanical thing, extend our heartiest thanks to you, sir. Thank you, Mr. So once again, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, Dr. Shekhar Ji and the uh, Murugappa Polytechnic College for this opportunity. I hope uh, the session is uh, fruitful and helpful to uh, all of you. So please go through the videos, go through the PPT. I'm sure it will be very helpful to you. Uh, and I wish uh, all of you the very best. So thank you once again. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, sir. See you all. See you. Bye.